Hey everybody, it's Brandon again. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look again at Zorin OS. This is a Linux distribution that we first looked at about a year ago now on the channel. And so we're going to be circling back on it, see what's new, what's changed. And um, I had a lot of different new subscribers since then who maybe haven't seen the Zorin videos and uh, want to see what it's all about. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at it. Just to get started, um, I have this about window up so you can see what kind of hardware I'm using here. This is uh, this little Asus laptop I got. It's only got 4 gigs of RAM, slow Celeron, 4020 CPU, uh, Intel graphics, uh, nothing to write home to mom about. And uh, I just wanted to show you that so you know that even on a totally slow, underpowered system like this, this uh, system still works pretty good. Although I did notice when I tried to resize a window, oh, it's working. Oh, you might have saw it there. You kind of get some graphical glitches every once in a while. Yeah. I don't know what that's all about. It, uh, it only seems to happen when I'm resizing a window. And so what I'm going to go ahead and show you here is just a file manager so you can see what kind of theme we're working with. It's actually kind of a neat looking uh, distribution. So Zorin OS is based on Ubuntu. And given, given that's based on Ubuntu, I'm assuming there's probably going to be another update to this coming out in about a month or two because uh, that's when the new Ubuntu is going to be coming out. And if that's the case, we'll look at it again then. Um, the thing about Zorin is it's designed to be like super easy for a beginner who's never used Linux before, doesn't know what they're doing, wants just something that kind of works like Windows. And uh, that's kind of what they went for here. And the cool thing about it is it comes preloaded with all the third-party repositories enabled. It comes preloaded with uh, the Flat Hub enabled, which gives you access to like basically anything you could want on Linux. And they just made it, like I said, really easy to use. Uh, it gives you a little menu down here. They try to make it look like the old Windows Start menu. It kind of reminds me of the XFCE menu, but um, or KDE. This might be KDE based. I don't know. File Manager looks like GNOME files though, but. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Let's go to the software repository. Well, first let me show you what comes pre-installed. They do give you some games right out of the bat. Nothing I'd play, but they give you some games. What do they give you for graphics? They give you GIMP, an image viewer, photo app. Internet comes with Firefox pre-installed. And the Remina, or Remina, however you say that, that is a remote desktop application, so that's pretty handy. Office, I think they got standard LibreOffice, so that should take care of most of your office needs. Uh, sound and video. I don't see VLC pre-installed. You're probably going to want to grab that if you install this. System tools. Probably got your terminal, your updater, basic stuff like that. And utilities. What do they got? Kind of the basics for Linux. So let's go ahead in the software center and see what all you can install in this thing. And we're full screen. We don't need to be. Okay, like I said, this comes with the uh, not only the Ubuntu repositories, which usually have quite a bit, it also comes with FlatHub, which has basically everything. So right off the bat, you can click on search. You can probably get Steam on this thing fairly easily for those who want to play games. We'll find out. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, there it is. You got your Steam. One click install that should be pretty easy. Um, I wonder if they have Chrome in the repository. A lot of people like Chrome browser. Yeah, there it is. Install Chrome if you want. If it was me, I'd probably get VLC right away. Best video player as far as I'm concerned. I notice on any Ubuntu system I use, the um, software apps kind of slow. If you guys saw my video on the last Ubuntu update, I'm not a fan, but Zorn's okay. And so I just, like I showed you, it's very really easy to basically install anything you want. Another thing with Zorin is it comes with uh, several themes for personalization. I think I got to click on the little Zorin menu here and go to Appearance. There we go. So you have kind of a uh, classic Windows looking system like this. Let's see what this one looks like. Did it change? Is this different? Oh, I think uh, this is the same deal, except it's going to maybe not group my uh, taskbar icons. 
Let's open Firefox and verify that. So this is probably like a Windows, um, pre-Windows 7 when it was grouping all your icons. All right, that's neat. What else we got? Yeah, this thing, I'm going to guess, is more like a, uh, oh, it's kind of got the icons in the middle, kind of like a Windows 11 looking dock. Oh, and that brings up standard GNOME app launcher. I had it open for a second. So that's neat. And this last one probably just looks like typical GNOME. And it does. Okay. So yeah, there's different themes, different looks. And apparently there's more desktop layouts. They offer a pro version of Zorin. Zorin Pro. Um, I don't remember what the price is. Let's click on that. I probably wouldn't upgrade, but if you really like the system that you probably get technical support and all these other themes. I just want to see the price. Oh, there it is. 39 bucks. You can upgrade to Pro. Me, probably I wouldn't do it, but that's me. Everybody's got their own their own deal. So yeah, that's Zorin OS. They also have a Zorin Connect app that if I had an installed on my phone I'd show you. If you look through my uh, channel archives I did a review of the Zorin Connect app. It's a way you can I think transfer files between your phone and your Zorin pretty easy and get your phone notifications on your desktop. So that's pretty cool. I'm pretty sure it only works on Android. But that is another thing they offer. And so yeah this is an option. If, if you know nothing about Linux and uh, Chrome OS doesn't quite do it for you, you can try Zorin. They also have a light version that's based on XFCE and it runs a little faster. Uh, but on this super slow laptop, the core version's running just as good as anything. Um, I could say on this system, Chrome OS Flex is a little faster. Unless I try to run Linux applications, then it would be faster on an actual Linux distribution like this. Now me personally, I like Fedora. And uh, with the recent updates of Fedora Linux, it's almost as easy as this, uh, except there are some times we have to get into the terminal on Fedora and just tweak some things. I think they try to set this up to where you uh, don't even have to worry about the terminal existing if you don't want to, which is good for a lot of people. So if you never used Linux before, this would be one to try. If you want to get it, just uh, open your browser of choice, search for Zorin. Oh, what am I doing? Oh, there we go. Zorin OS. There will be a download section right off the bat. And while you're downloading it, oh, that's the paid one. If you scroll down a little bit, you get the free one. Here's Core, which is what I'm using. There's Light, which I reviewed Light about a year ago also. I didn't like it as much, but I also don't like XFCE as much. So while you're downloading it, there will also be a link that shows the instructions on how to burn this to a USB if you don't know how to do it. Uh, when I installed this, I actually burnt uh, the USB media using the, uh, the Chrome Media Writer tool that you use to make Chrome OS Flex uh, USBs. So if you know how to do that, you'll know how to do this. So yeah, this is a good one to try. It's, uh, I, I, I'd recommend this one to beginners. If, especially if it's going to be between this and Ubuntu or something, I'd pick Zorin. Even though it's based on Ubuntu, I think it's, I like how it relies more on uh, flat packs instead of snaps. I, snaps are annoying. I like the UI here better. Um, if you don't mind getting a little more into the weeds of it, I'd recommend taking a look at Fedora. But this is a nice looking one for the beginner. So let me know what you guys think. I think it's an okay system. I'd recommend it. And uh, when the update comes out, I'm assuming in a month or two, we'll take a look at that too. So, like always, thanks for watching. Let me know if you want me to test anything else on Zorn. Until next time, have a good day. Goodbye now.